The Rubble It add-on for Blender is all about adding realistic debris and trash to your 3D scenes. Whether it's broken concrete, scattered wood, or random garbage, it's designed to save time while giving you creative control. It's built around Blender's geometry nodes, which makes it flexible and lightweight. But it's definitely not the kind of tool you can just click and go. You'll want to know a bit about Blender's systems to get the most out of it. Using Rubble It kicks off with a button. Hit the Add Rubble It button and you're ready to start scattering debris. From there, you'll need to set up a collection for your rubble pieces. These could be high poly chunks of debris like broken concrete, let's say, or lower poly objects like trash and scrap wood, depending on the look you're going for. If you're aiming for detailed ambient occlusion effects, it's worth using higher poly objects as they tend to deliver more precise results. Just keep in mind that this might push your system a bit if you're not working with strong hardware. Once you've got your collection ready, link it to the Rubble It object in the Geometry Notes tab, and that's where things get interesting. The add-on offers three distribution modes that you can pick based on the effect you're aiming for. The first is AO mode, which is good for creating clusters of rubble in corners or along baseboards. It uses ambient occlusion to detect those tight, shadowy areas where debris would naturally collect, adding a nice touch of authenticity. Then there's Field Mode, which uses an empty object to define where the rubble will land. This mode is more suited for covering broader areas, like scattering trash across a yard or spreading rubble over a large floor. It's a straightforward way to manage wide-scale debris placement without overcomplicating things. For maximum control, there's Weight Paint Mode. This mode allows you to paint directly on the surface of an object to define exactly where the rubble will appear. It's great for precision, like when you want debris concentrated in specific areas of a scene. One important thing to keep in mind here is that the objects in your collection need to have vertex group names that match the weight pane and mesh. If those don't line up, the rubble won't distribute properly, which can be frustrating if you've already spent time painting. There is a fact I really appreciated, and it's that each mode has an invert option. Basically, it focuses on adding the rubbles everywhere except the area of your selection or in the case of AO mode, away from the AO areas. Talking about AO mode, there is one thing to know in particular, and it's that it works best with higher poly objects, because it relies on ambient occlusion to calculate where rubble should appear. Using low poly models can make the distribution feel less precise. It's not a deal breaker if you're working on a simpler scene, but for detailed environments, it's definitely worth keeping this in mind to avoid breaking the illusion of realism. Once you've set up your rubble, you can start tweaking sliders to control density, randomness, and placement. You can even fine-tune the appearance of the rubble and choose what kind you want from concrete, brick, wood, metal, and trash, or you can adjust the AO subdivision for better results in AO mode. There is a lot of flexibility here, but it's not without its quirks. For example, if you're not careful with your density settings, things can get really heavy on your system, especially if you're working with high poly objects. When it's time to export, Rubble It has a Realized Instances button that turns all your procedural rubble into a static mesh. This is essential if you're exporting to a game engine or sharing files with someone who doesn't use Blender. This whole process is pretty simple. What I like about Rubble It is how procedural it feels. You're not locked into a specific setup and you can reuse the same system across multiple projects. The different distribution modes give you enough options for a variety of scenes. That said, it's not as plug and play as some other add-ons. There's definitely a learning curve here, especially with weight paint mode, where everything relies on properly named vertex groups. Plus, the distribution can sometimes be messy and needs more cleaning. I hope you guys found this video useful and informative, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up. Also, subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.